What's up guys, Daniel Elias Fishing. Welcome back to the channel. Got a good one in store for you today. I'm gonna share with you my top baits that I have tied on in the month of December. It's a great month to go fishing. The lakes aren't as pressured. A lot of people are out uh, shopping, getting ready for the holidays. It's an awesome time to catch a really big fish too. Um, and it's really a tale of two tail. Tale of two tapes. Is that how they say it? I think so. But what happens is you've got some fish that are going to move deep and you've got some fish that will go shallow under the right conditions. We're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, but really, first, I want to share with you my number one bait in the month of December. That's going to be a drop shot. That being said, I make some changes on my drop shot this time of year. Number one, I really scale down. So the uh, line strength, I drop down to six pound test at best, um, at most, right? Normally I'll be going with eight, even sometimes 10. Uh, but during the winter in the month of December, you want to downsize to that six pound fluorocarbon because it makes a big difference in the amount of bites you get. So I like six pound trilene fluorocarbon, 100% fluorocarbon. Um, I also downsize my bait. So instead of throwing a six or a seven inch drop shot worm, my favorite one this time of year is going to be the Berkeley Maxent flatworm. Um, it's a smaller bait. I use a small size. I don't like a worm with a lot of action. So you won't see me throwing a curl tail this time of year. I really, really like to get down into those smaller baits, something that's finesse and fish it significantly deeper. It's not uncommon, especially out where I live in Arizona, to catch fish in 40, 50, 60, sometimes 70 feet. Um, that happens a little bit more, that 70 foot range in January, I believe. In December, they start getting deep, but not quite that deep. Um, but don't ever sleep on the drop shot if you need to get bit. It'd be my number one bait. Number two, sticking with the deep theme is a jig, a football jig. Um, but not just any football jig. What I'm talking about is a finesse football jig. So a small one. Um, this is a really, really little finesse football jig that I match up with a chigger craw trailer, a three inch chigger craw trailer. Um, and sometimes I cut it down pretty short. I mean, this one, you can see it's still got some length on it, but I may even cut that down just a little bit shorter if I need to. Um, but don't forget to throw the jig. Now I do throw this on lighter rod and lighter line. So it's pretty common that I'll throw my jig this time of year on only 10 pound test because it will get you more bites. Uh, water tends to be a little more stagnant in most places. It can clear up a little bit. And by going to that lighter line will definitely generate more bites for you. Now, number three, um, one of my favorites to throw this time of year is going to be a crankbait. But this is when I've transitioned from the summer away from the dredger, then to the money badger. And now that we're in December, that's when the money badger kind of gets put away and I move over to the new one, that's gonna be the Berkley Dime. So the Berkley Dime, this is the six foot model. It is a really, really, really awesome crankbait. Um, you know, it has Berkley's better than balsa technology. So it runs straight and true right out of the package. It doesn't get messed up like a typical balsa bait where you're gonna get about one out of every three of them runs kind of wonky. Um, this one's gonna be tried and true every time. I've talked about it before in previous videos. So if you want an in-depth look at the Berkeley Dime, go ahead and take a look at that video that I put out before. You can really get a good idea of what this bait is like. And hey, hopefully you like this new camera. I'm trying to work out this autofocus feature. So it's a little bit weird, but I think it's working sometimes. But try the Berkeley Dime. Same deal, guys. Throw it on that lighter line. Um, you know, when I'm going with a four or a six foot model, it's not uncommon for me to throw it on eight pound test. Um, if you want to go with a bigger model, sometimes 10, but that's about the highest I will go. So you're seeing a theme, downsize your line in the month of December. It will make a really, really big difference. Now, moving back out deep, you got a second group of fish that I really fish for when I'm drop shot and throwing the jig, not so much the crankbait. But that second group of fish that moves deep, a lot of times they school up. So you can find large schools of fish this time of year. And one of the best ways to catch those fish is on forward-facing sonar. Um, my favorite bait 
for forward-facing sonar. I've talked about it before. It's the Berkley Power Switch. The Power Switch is an incredible bait that really has a wild action. It darts left and right and as it pops up and down and it's very erratic in its directional changes. It moves laterally through the water column really, really well without really coming at you. So if you need to throw it out at a fish, you can twitch it and it doesn't have a ton of forward movement. So we'll obviously move forward, but it has a lot of lateral side to side uh, action that's very erratic. It can be triggering for fish. Um, so try this if you haven't thrown the Berkeley Power Switch. It's pretty awesome. I love it a lot. The other one is just a standard jigging spoon. Um, you know, I used to spend a lot of time throwing the half ounce Strata Spoon by Bass Pro Shops. I've moved to this new one, uh, which I think they call a, a twitching spoon or jigging spoon. Um, and trying to get you an idea what it looks like with this camera, but really natural looking spoon that has an action that can be really, really super unique uh, in terms of it darts, doesn't go side to side, but it really has that funny shimmy on the fall, right? And it, and it kind of, you can pop up and it has a shimmy as it falls down. So a little bit different than the power switch. Really, this isn't one that you're gonna cast out. You want to fish this vertically for sure, um, in front, of, you know, directly below the boat. I like this one because, as you can see, it has a swivel built in to the spoon. Um, comes standard like that, so I don't really like the hook that comes on it. So I changed that to a Berkley Fusion treble, um, but it's really good to work through schools of fish, um, and it really kind of catches everything, which is pretty awesome. Um, so if you get over a group of stripers or white bass or hybrids, something like that, you can catch them on the jig and spoon. Just a tried and true technique. Stick with something around a half ounce is typically going to be your best bet. Um, and really, I got two more. Um, two that are in a two different class of baits, um, but really, I'm going to move to swim baits because in December, I love throwing a big swim bait. You can catch a really big bass in December throwing a big swim bait. Um, and really, I would tell you there's two styles that I look at. Um, I like glide baits, first of all, in December. I don't want one with a big, you know, wide tail action that makes a, moves a lot of water. Um, I'm going to stick with something that has that X, S action like a glide, um, or I'm going to throw something on the bottom, and I'll talk about that too. Um, but really two baits that I have fallen in love with. Number one is going to be that Berkley Nessie. So really, really awesome soft glide bait, single jointed glide bait that almost walks in place. Um, you know, it has a really good enticing S curve to it, almost like a hard bait, but you can really dance that almost in place where it doesn't move forward a whole lot. So it's really, really great around cover. So if you get around trees, boat docks, um, you know, you're around a boulder that you really wanna slow that bait down and fish, this is a great one. That hook keeper is second to none. It's pretty awesome. Uh, the second style is going to be a hard glide bait. Uh, this is gonna be my favorite, okay? So I'm gonna hold that up there. Hopefully it's focused on it. Uh, that is a Depths Slide Swimmer 250. Um, really, really awesome hard glide bait that has a very enticing X action. You're gonna need to gear up when you throw these baits. Uh, you cannot throw baits like this on little baby rods. So with this one, um, you definitely want a swim bait rod, a bigger reel, like a Revo Beast. Uh, I throw this, the slide swimmer is a little bit heavier. I throw it on monofilament. So generally 25 pound Berkeley Trilene big game. Um, I use this to cover water. So I can cover far more water with a big hard glide bait than I can with the Nessie. But if I want to pinpoint fish on a specific piece of cover, you can't beat this Nessie. It's incredible. So glide bait time is here. If you live around a lake where they stock trout, get a trout colored glide bait, whether it's the trout colored Nessie, I don't have it in my hand, but they have them, um, or it's a slide swimmer or whatever your favorite glide bait is, this is the time of year to throw them. 
Watch the pressure changes. Watch the barometric pressure. When it's dropping, when you get storm systems moving in, that's when you catch the really, really big fish. Um, so check out the glide baits. The last one I'm gonna tell you about is another swim bait. It is not a glide bait, but it is a tried and true bait that's been thrown on the West Coast for years and years and years, and it works. And that's gonna be the Huddleston. So with the Huddleston, you're talking about a big, big trout imitating bait. I prefer the eight inch. So this is an eight inch Huddleston Deluxe. Uh, rate of fall on it is 12. So the ROF 12 means I think it falls like 12 inches every second or something like that. I'm not that familiar with them. But this is not a bait that you are going to throw out and just swim back to the boat. How you fish this bait and how you catch big fish on an eight inch Huddleston is you throw it out and you let it sink all the way to the bottom. And then you fish it back to the bait, back to the boat, excuse me, extremely slow. And when I say fish it slow, like that is not an exaggeration. However slow you think you're fishing, you need to double the slowness, slow it down twice as much. And when you've slowed it down, slow it down again. You want this thing barely moving. It sits nose down on the bottom and it just sort of hops along like a little trout, right? Um, and that's how you catch big ones. Don't throw it out and swim it back to the boat. It looks cool, but you won't catch a lot. Not that you can't, it's just not gonna work that well. If you throw it out and fish it really, really slow, that's gonna be the best way to fish it. Now, the biggest tip I will give you is instead of throwing this, from deep water up shallow, fishing it back to the boat. Take your boat and put it in shallow water and throw this deep. It's a lot easier to bring it uphill than it is to keep that bottom contact going downhill. So, or quarter it, right? If you're going down a bank, you wanna throw it kind of out to deep water, even at a 45 degree angle, work it up. It works a lot better. You're not gonna get a ton of bites on it, but when you do, it's probably going to be a really big fish. So hopefully you guys are still going out in December and fishing. It Fishing is tough, I'm not gonna lie. Not as tough as January, but it's tough in December, but this is the time of year where you can catch an absolute giant if you stay focused and you don't have a lot of people to compete with on the water. The wakeboarders and the wake surfers are generally not out there. Uh, sometimes in Arizona, they're pretty brave. I see them out there in dry suits, but not a ton of them. So get out, catch you a Christmas fish. Uh, hope these tips helped you. If you got any questions, comments, leave them down below. Appreciate you asking questions. I love getting them to them and answering them. Um, obviously, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Appreciate y'all, and I'll see you on the next one.